Oh, howdy all, grab yourselves a beer, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today, what I want to talk about is using master missions in order to build yourself a map pool at the beginning of a new league. Uh, and so here you can see a Temple of Atsuadal, and you'll see it's monster level 81. Uh, I have run almost all of this, and I think I got a bit unlucky. Uh, I ended up leaving with three maps that are, that are relevant tiers to my character. I did just want to turn on an item from an incursion vial because I got one of them while I was in here. But that three maps can often be the difference between sustaining and, well, sustaining and successfully building a map pool and failing to build a map pool because Elver missions are something that's kind of a dime a dozen. When you first get into maps, you're going to have only one of each of the master missions and no Zana missions at all. But by the time that you've run a few maps, you'll be able to pick up quite a uh, quite a number of them, and particularly like uh, you'll get a lot of white tier Elva missions. You got a lot of white tier missions of all of the masters. This is because basically no one has trouble acquiring tier one through five maps, and you do generally run quite a lot of them in order to get well established in your atlas and to build up this number, the completed bonus objectives. Now the first thing I want to say about building a map tier, uh, building a map pool, is that this number is incredibly important. I, you can see here that I've got each bonus objective uh, completes uh, increases this by one percent. I've got twenty two percent chance for maps to drop two tiers higher, and maps always drop one tier higher. Uh, this is absolutely incredible. Uh, people really underestimate this. This is the reason. This stat is the reason that players who are familiar with endgame play, so they're used to a situation where they've got an Atlas bonus in the 130s or the 140s, why they find that they're just not getting maps at the start of a new league. It's because this stat isn't there, and so essentially they have a big less multiplier to the drop rates of the higher tier maps, the ones that they actively care about. So the first thing they want to point out is that uh, this needs to be brazed as quickly as possible. There's a couple of ways of doing this. The first one is just running all of the maps that you've got that you haven't completed yet. So you'll undoubtedly pick up some maps that are of tiers you're just not really interested in running, uh, but that are maps, uh, maps that you haven't yet done. You'll notice the only one I'm missing in tier 2 is Summit. Uh, the only one I'm missing in tier... Actually, there's nothing at all in tier 3 anymore. Uh, tier 4, I think, is similar. Yeah, I completed all the tier 4s, uh, and there's only one tier 5 that I haven't done. The reason for this is that uh, getting all of these out of the way as quickly as is reasonably possible will turbocharge all of your map drops and will really help you out. But you will hit a point where you just can't seem to get the maps that you don't own to drop. And that is where Zana comes in. So Zana's missions will be a little bit scarcer. You want to beat a tier 3 map as quickly as possible in a new league. Uh, once you do complete a tier 3 map, you'll meet Zana. Uh, you'll be able to enter one of the various Watchstone Citadels. So, you know, for instance, uh, had it been Turn's End that was first for me, uh, I might have got that from completing Toxic Sewer Map, and then you find, you'll meet Zana and get access to this currently no use to you uh, Citadel. Zana will then start accruing missions with a 7% chance each time you kill a map boss, uh, as well as getting one per day. What you want to do is go to Zana's shop. Zana sells maps and the highest tiers that she has available. So she'll sell a random selection from, from tiers that are available. The highest tiers that she is able to sell you will be determined by the number of different maps you've completed on the Atlas. So for me, that's a little bit more than this 122. Uh, there's a couple of maps I just did the normal version of. I haven't done the uh, Atlas bonus because I got frustrated after my first palace map that dropped. I corrupted it and it went, it went into a Vile Temple. Uh, exactly the same thing happened on my first Overgrown Ruin, so I thought, you know what, stuff this, I'm just going to get the map done so, so it's more likely to drop. Uh, now, once you... So, Zana's shop, however, uh, will sell maps of low tier that you probably need early on. And this should be your first step when you're looking to build a map pool. Uh, every time that Zana's shop resets, you're going to want to buy all of the maps that she's selling that you don't already have that are at a reasonable price. You may also want to buy some of the maps that are at the higher tiers. Uh, this is particularly useful, and this was how I got through what I feel is the most difficult part in building a map pool, which is getting yourself your first six to eight tier eight plus maps. 
Uh, those can be quite hard to get, but Zana will just sell them to you for two or three alchemy orbs each. Uh, and that's your main use for alchemy orbs at that point in, in league progression. Later on, Zana has another main use. Uh, so every time you run one of her missions, uh, so you know you use an Atlas mission up. I'm not actually going to do that to demonstrate. Uh, so you'll see I've got four of them here. If I am in a tier 14 map, Zana will offer me a selection of tiers 14 and 15 maps that I can run. These are bonuses. These are, this is essentially a free map, uh, and it can drop maps from anywhere on the Atlas. So where, uh, where maps will respect what you've completed and you'll have trouble getting maps that you've not done before. So for instance, in normal circumstances, I could only get a Burial Chambers map if I was running one of the adjacent maps. However, uh, so that's uh, Canyon, that's uh, Castle Ruins, that's Academy, that's Val Pyramid, and it's Barrows, the ones that have got a direct line there. However, I can get Burial Chambers to drop on any Zana mission. Uh, at all that is tier 14 or higher, uh, tier 13 or higher actually. So Zana's map drops won't respect my atlas. That will help you fill out your. That will help you fill out holes in your atlas, and also just by virtue of you having an entire additional map to kill all the monsters in, uh, it will also help you to get more map drops. So Zana's missions are really, really good. Elva's missions, on the other hand, are something that's a little bit less known about. Now with Elva, uh, and we'll just go view temple here so that you can see this, this is a temple that is fully connected. I've just completed this. So you see that you can access every single room in it. It has none of the genuinely good map rooms. Uh, if you can get your hands on the Atlas of Worlds room, which is the, or any of the lower tiers of it, that will contain maps. I didn't have it offered to me, so I didn't get it. Uh, additionally, the thing that's really good with Elva is that you can use three of her white tier missions on tier 5 maps, and then one of her red tier mash, uh, missions on a tier 16 map. And if you do this, her entire temple will be tier 16. The reason for this is that it takes the average of the 12 incursions that you do and adds 10 to it, and then hard caps that at the highest level individual incursion map that you did. So if your maps were 5, five uh, if your maps were 5, 5, 5, and 16, you have nine fives and one six, uh, and three sixteens, and that average works out to be. Uh, ooh, let's do some quick maths in my head. Uh, five plus five plus five plus sixteen is thirty-one. Uh, the average there is going to be tier seven and a half or seven and three quarters. Sorry, the average of all the incursions you did. Add ten to that, seventeen and three quarters. Uh, capped at sixteen because that's the highest individual one you did. Her whole temple is going to be tier. Uh, is going to be tier sixteen. You can also substitute yellow missions uh, in place of white missions here. So you could do tier 5s, or you could do, say, tier 8 maps, a uh, nice cruisy tier 8 map, and then throw in one tier 16 at the end. If you're struggling with tier 16s, then what you can do is instead you uh, is uh, just run a scoured tier 16. Normally that's a really wasteful thing to do, but because the, uh, because the Elva Temple will give you so many maps, uh, or at least so many monsters to kill which can all drop maps. It's not guaranteed you'll get lots of maps, but you will on average. Uh, you'll be able to make up for that wastage. Or maybe you don't want to be quite as wasteful as using a scoured map. Maybe you just want to use a transmuted map, get two easy mods on it, then regal it, uh, and have a three mod map. Uh, this will be really easy because your transmute alteration augment uh, crafting got two map, two map mods that you aren't scared of at all. And then your Regal might hit a nasty one, but uh, you should still be fine with that. So that's a couple of ways that you can use Elva's missions. Uh, the key thing with Elva is just that the, the Temple of Atsuadal is such a big zone that even though the monsters are individually not all that likely to drop maps, uh, overall you'll get lots of them. Uh, I, did, I did a Temple just before, I got three maps, I feel that was unlucky. Uh, it's my experience, you normally get four or five. The last thing I want to add you need to make a decision at some point as to whether or not you are interested in running uh, tier 13, 12, and 11 maps anymore. Uh, so there, there'll come a point where you're only going to run 14 and up for the rest of the league. However, before you get to that point, you may decide that you want to uh, sacrifice 
some of your chances of tier 14, 15 and 16 maps in order to get a lot more tier 13, 12 and 11 drops. The way that you do that is by setting up your atlas so that in octants that you aren't concerned about at the moment. So once I've killed Veritania here, you'll see that I'll have all of my uh, watchstones for Glenak cans. I no longer really need four watchstone Glenak can maps dropping. So what I'm going to do at that point is remove one of the watchstones from Glenark cans. Uh, and then I'll redeploy them. The Lex Proxima ones will go into New Vestia. The uh, One of the Glenark cans ones will come out. And what this will mean is that if the game rolls a tier 13 map drop, I will get a tier 13 from Glenark cans. I'm not that sure that I'm going to run that. Uh, I might. If I don't, I can sell it to another player. If I do then it's something that can then drop tier 14, 15, or tier 14 and 15 maps that I care about. Additionally, I could use a Harbinger Orb on one if one drops for me. Anyways, uh, hopefully that helps you get through the hard part of map sustain. Because really, fundamentally, map sustain is two different problems. There is the, there is the requirement to go for... Like, if you've got 20 tier 16 maps already in your map pool... Uh, and you want to run 100 tier 16 maps and end that with 20, that's sustaining. That generally is pretty easy at the moment. But going from having one tier 16 to having dozens uh, is a very different matter. That's over-sustaining. Over-sustaining is not trivial, uh, but these master missions hopefully help you do that. If you've got any comments or questions, though, definitely fire away below. Uh, there are all sorts of alternative things you can use as well. Uh, this is perhaps a time to use your sextants. Uh, you can see I've been pretty slack with using them this league. Haven't really been uh, haven't really been doing much with them at all, actually. Uh, but sextants will make sure that you get more maps uh, dropping for you just by virtue of putting more monsters into a region. So, for instance, uh, I will be working on uh, Haywark Hamlet next as soon as I do this current wave of conquerors. So eh, I don't like that mod. There are four additional packs of monsters. That's a bonus. Uh, three additional rare monster packs. That's a bonus. Uh, three additional packs that have mirrored rare monsters as well as being able to run my reflect maps and I don't like that thing there we go so what I've just done there is added something like uh, 14 packs of monsters to the next three maps that I've done there that's been at a very low cost all I've used was six simple sextants uh, that's almost nothing and essentially it's giving me 42 packs of additional monsters all of which have a good chance of dropping maps that I want to source in Haywark Hamlet for when I start working on that often next. Anyways, uh, leaving it there, comments and questions, definitely fire away below.